impersonating Shut the up, Chad Gino. Stop. Shut up. You're getting real close to getting remanded. Okay. Bye bye bye. Okay. What's up, man? All right. I'm just gonna be straight up honest with you. I'm okay. not a cop. Okay. <laughs> I want that last guy to come back and teach us how to dance. He's a pretty smooth guy. Judge Douglas is the sitting judge in Las Vegas, Nevada. Unlike the severe cases that court cam is known for. This is a relatively mild case involving financial restitution. The defendant is Gary Walters, who's on parole for various financial crimes. He's in court today over restitution he was ordered to pay as part of his sentence. While the defendant is making his case, the judge notices a stranger standing behind him and bids him to make his case. Here, it's less about what said stranger has to say and more about the judge's reaction which is as blunt as it is amusing. No, not then, you're, then you need to sit down and quit staring at me like somehow you need to talk to me or whatever. I do you're need not, to. Pardon? Can I make a record? No. Okay. I'm gonna make a record about you in a minute. You can't appear in my criminal case and act like an attorney, so sit down and be quiet. The stranger, whose name is Landino, isn't backing down. For some reason, he's quite intent on catching the judge's attention. How will Judge Douglas react? Will he lose his calm and order the stranger out of the court? You want to act like an a**hole, act like an a**hole, but I'm telling you, that gets you nowhere in court. And you know what else gets you nowhere in court? Sitting in the audience of a court while a judge is engaging with somebody. I'm sorry, it was inadvertent. I no, it wasn't inadvertent. Don't give me that. It's not inadvertent. It's never... Get out! It's never inadvertent when you come in and act all disrespectful to people. Blandino has to exit in embarrassment. However... He seeks revenge by filing a petition against Judge Douglas to have him dismissed from the case. Of course, his plea is denied, but that's not the end of it. A little over a year later, the tables are turned when Blandino has to face trial on extortion charges. Blandino seems intent on being his own attorney at his trial. But the judge is having none of it. Mr. Alder, will you accept appointment as standby counsel? I have an objection. Shut up. Your reputation has preceded you. Will you accept appointment on him as, as standby counsel? Your Honor, I can. Although the sitting judge isn't quite Judge Douglas, the new judge is aware of Blandino's former disruptive saga. The judge's laid-back attitude is quite different from Judge Douglas's, and his approach to the entire matter is quite funny. I think the defendant has already categorized himself as a vexatious litigant. Can I make a record? No. I've got a, I've got a motion. What did I just say? Know. What did I just say? No. I can't say anything. No. Hey, shut up. No, stop. Shut up. You're getting real close to getting remanded. Okay, okay, bye-bye, okay. The 26-year-old woman, Monica, in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's a pretty routine hearing that's over in minutes. The overall mood is excellent, to the point that Monica's daughter goes up to the judge, where they have a good time playing with each other. However, all is not well, and trouble is brewing in the background. It all begins when Monica has to undergo a routine drug search. Making a false allegation against a police officer? In this context, that wouldn't even be a crime in Clark County. For what? Things have very quickly gone south. Monica is now facing arrest, and even worse, having her daughter taken away from her. She's agitated and scared of being arrested. She pleads, argues, and appears repentant. But the marshal has taken offense. You're saying it. Not turn around. I will also have it. Okay. Jimmy, I got caught. I still have to do this, so arrest her. I, okay, it was all lies. It was all lies. It was all lies. It was all lies. Let me go. So, listen, Why would you be on, on record, right on tape, in the courtroom. It's quite amusing to see how the matter has escalated so quickly. 
Nevertheless, Monica's not in much luck. Her pleading doesn't prevent her from being arrested. And she's detained while her husband comes to pick up her daughter. Contreras is taken to jail, formally charged with providing false information to a police officer and disturbing the peace. Her daughter's turned over to special services until the girl's father picked her up later that day. However, Monica eventually has the last laugh, as further investigations reveal the truth of what happened. The marshal in charge is fired, and she's awarded damages for the ordeal she has had to go through. Contreras filed a complaint against Marshal Fox, claiming that in addition to improper protocol, the officer also groped her breast and buttocks during the drug search. She was later awarded $200,000 in a court settlement. The perpetrator, Marshal Ron Fox, was fired immediately following the investigation. Marshal James Kenyon was later relieved of his duties. It's always funny when a civilian tries to impersonate a cop. The results aren't always good, and there's a big chance of getting into trouble while at it. While some people manage to pull it off on the rare occasion, 18-year-old Mr. Brendan has no such luck. It all begins at night in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Six months earlier, Wazinski was driving an unmarked car with a police siren when he pulled over a driver for speeding. You gotta talk to her for a minute. Mr. Brendan is brave enough to impersonate an officer and even do some good work while at it. It's pretty amusing to see him pulling up another civilian for speeding. However, he runs out of luck as another officer comes by. This police officer then questions him. Okay. I I know I'm under equipped. Okay. Do you have an ID with you? This is this is all I got. I mean, like I said, I'm under I'm under equipped. I know it makes no sense. I caught him going 120 down I-40. Mr. Brendan tries all he can to maintain his story. However, any honest officer worth his uniform can see through the ruse. His body language is all wrong. His story isn't convincing, and his voice lacks the confidence of an officer of the law. Enzo requests a supervisor from the Bernalillo Sheriff's Office to come down to the scene. Can you talk real quick? Yeah, give me one second. What's up, man? All right. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. Okay. I'm not a cop. Okay. Did you get that badge from? I bought it offline. Offline. Okay. Do me a favor. Stay, stay in here, okay? For a second. He later faces a judge who's kind enough to let him off any jail time. He's put on probation with the promise of not having further charges pressed, provided that he completes a psychological evaluation. He procrastinates, but eventually gets it done. But he gets a break when the judge gives him an extra two weeks to complete the evaluation. I can try the best I can, Your Honor. I mean, I have honestly a lot going on right now, and it's, it's stressful. But I will find my hardest to get it done. Wazinski did eventually complete his evaluation and was able to avoid jail time. And hopefully his days of impersonating an officer are over. The defendant, Mr. Griffith, faces charges of car theft and trespassing. Even worse, his actions have brought him into direct violation of his former probation. Yeah, you guessed it. The former crime also involves car theft. The defendant, Calvin Lloyd Griffith, allegedly broke into a local school and stole an employee's car. Griffith was arrested and is here on charges of grand theft, burglary, and trespassing. Mr. Griffith looks very unserious. His body language isn't that of a soon-to-be convict, fearful of an impending sentence. From the start, he does all he can to catch the judge's attention. All his efforts prove abortive. Calvin Lloyd Griffin Jr. on page 12. Good morning. Yeah, I'm on probation. I'm on papers. Okay. I'll be here anyway because I smoke weed and cocaine. The court officials decide to cut Griffith's mic off to prevent him from talking over everyone. So the officer to. Now that the court officials have disabled his microphone, Mr. Griffith does something extra to get the judge's attention who's still busy checking the papers. The saying, actions speak louder than voice, applies here. And Mr. Griffith is only too eager to demonstrate to the court. It's a hilarious display. <laughs> Not impressed with Griffith's twerking abilities, the 
judge moves on with the case. Of course, the judge's professionalism at the time means she doesn't take too kindly to Mr. Griffith's antics. She proceeds with her judgment, sets his bond for over $18,000, and dismisses him for the next case. However, it is later revealed that she found the dramatics very entertaining. Who wouldn't? I want the last guy to come back and teach us how to dance. <laughs> He's a pretty smooth guy. 